Rita Clemens is a moderator and local rep for LHCOS. She's been keeping crabs for three years now after starting, like so many of us did, buying from a terrible beach shop. After finding LHCOS, she corrected all the terrible things she'd subjected her hermit crabs to, and they're all quite happy and healthy now. She and her husband recently moved to the Jersey Shore, where she hopes to increase awareness for proper hermit crab care. Please welcome Rita Clemens. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the non-sciencey edition of Demystifying the Surface Molt. I'm Rita, and this may not seem very exciting, but it's good information for you, and it's, it's stuff you should have and things you should be prepared for. Nobody wants it to happen, but you got to be ready. Let's go. So if you're new to hermit crabs and you keep hearing this word molt, and you're wondering what's going on. Molting is just a process by which the hermit crab either grows or can regenerate a limb that might have been lost. Ideally, in the wild or in a well set up tank, they're going to go under the sub to do that. They've had plenty to eat and they're good to go. They go underneath. You, some of you, you, you're shaking your head. You're like, yeah, they just disappear for weeks and months. Sometimes, if they're new crabs to you, you know when you bought your crabs and you brought them home and you had all good intentions and the store said, oh, all they need are these creepy little pellets to eat, maybe a piece of lettuce from time to time. Fine. Okay, that's what I'll do. Then we do a little research and we find out those pellets are the devil and they have to stop eating them. So we stop eating them, hormones kick in, things happen, and all of a sudden your crab needs to molt. But he's not really ready to do all the digging and go down, so here he is on the surface. So let's talk a little bit about what happens when they decide they have to molt on the surface. It's not an emergency. It's something you should be on the lookout for or be careful of, um, but it's not an emergency and we're gonna help to get you prepared in case it does happen to you. So when a crab molts from his, basically his waist up, including all of his body, his head, his walking legs and his pinchers. All of that hard exo comes off and they're left with this vulnerable little baby skin sort of stuff going on. So you come to your tank one day and you look inside and you see what looks like your crab dead on the surface sitting outside the shell. You freak out. Don't freak out, first of all. Open the tank. Go wash your hands. Come back and pick up the shell that you see there. Flip it and look inside. Do you see anything? No. Look again, because that may be your baby crab sitting all the way in the bottom because he's kind of small now. He doesn't have all that big extra skin in there. Okay, so you look again. There's a crab in there, yay. So you're all set. If your crab is alone in the tank, you're good to go. You can just let him be and pretty much mother nature will take care of it. If your crab is not alone, this is where you need to be prepared. So what we're going to talk about right now and look at are ways for you to isolate your crab. This is a little bigger than I would normally use, but I wanted you to be able to take a look at it. What you've got is a little substrate in there, a little moss. You could do either or. By the way, if you need moss, check out Jeannie 
and her crabs and such, and she'll take good care of you. A little bit of water and this spoon. Don't transfer, you know, what's on you. Pick up your crab, put him in the little container, pick up the ISO from the other tank, put it in the tank with this. Now, this has to go back into your original tank to maintain heat and humidity. So you'll need a lid on there because you don't want any other crabs to get in and you don't want him to quite get out yet. Maybe a lid with some holes cut in it, just enough for him to get air circulation. Put it back in the tank. See you in a couple days. If you don't have a little Tupperware container, maybe you have this terrible little critter keeper that you brought your crab home in. Don't get rid of these. Hang on to these because they're wonderful in ISO situations. And if, you know, maybe you're picking up a crab that needs to be rescued, it's a whole other story, but hang on to these. Don't get rid of them. Also, if you have a small enough tank and you have room for it, you just set up a little tank as an ISO. It's good to have one on hand. You never know what's going to happen. Okay, so what's going to happen when this uh, little guy is in his isolation? He's going to be quiet. You're going to see him not move around a whole lot. He needs to eat his XO in order to get back to good. So you watch him. You don't go in there too much just to change out some water. No extra food. Again, only his XO. That's his only job right now is to eat that XO. So you can watch him. It's kind of fun to watch the meat. We know that. Um, he needs to eat about 75% of that XO to get back to good. Okay, so just to recap, don't panic. Look in the shell, deep, deep in the shell. Make sure, because he's in there, he's hiding. ISO, couple of days, XO gone. Watch him when you put him back. Most importantly, be prepared, don't be scared.